So I just ignored all the rules. Sort of hope that that fixes my problem. Please let me know, because I would like to learn. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. I've recently learned I'm a hypochondriac. My name's Ash, I'm a cybersecurity enthusiast, and on this channel, we go over try hack me walkthroughs and CTFs. But today on this video, we are going over my home lab. So this is the second installment of the home lab series. If you want to catch the first video, check up on the screen. Otherwise, let's go over what has happened thus far. So I was having issues with Ubuntu and with the server. Like it wasn't updating properly, getting all the packages. Plus I did forget to actually wipe the whole drive. Like there was still the Windows install from when it was a Windows machine. I decided to just wipe the whole thing and start again. So going over the steps that I actually went over in the first video was super easy. Something that I did have to learn was changing the lid settings. So since it's using a laptop, it'll automatically hibernate and turn off. So you can go into the systemd login D config file and then just go ahead and change some settings or uncomment some lines. So I just ignored all the rules. Then it was over to Docker. Now, since this is sort of like my second time setting up Docker, I can't encourage you enough to follow the documentation. If you're using Ubuntu like I am, this Docker documentation, engine install Ubuntu. Following this made sure everything worked from the get-go. Who knew following the manual made sense? Then it was over to setting up what I wanted containerized. I have seen uptime Kuma around as like a monitoring software. So that was one of the first things that I containerized. It's kind of funny because like the Docker container is running on the server and it's like pinging itself. So if the machine goes down, then like none of this monitoring matters because it's running on the machine. So it doesn't really make sense at the moment. I'm actually wanting to have like a separate machine to run uptime Kuma so it can ping this device and other devices. So then the next container that I've got set up is a speed test tracker. This runs hourly intervals of speed tests. It's kind of interesting just to have that information. And yes, for you who have much better internet than I do here in Australia, this is as good as it gets for where I am. And after using the remote desktop applications and stuffing around with that, I ended up moving over to Guacamole, Guacamole, which you can centralize connections. It's kind of insane how much you can do with this. It's all browser based and it sends their own protocol over HTTP, which converts that over to the remote desktop protocols. So like our browser doesn't even know that these remote desktops exist. Yeah, it's insane. Once it's set up, I can just have RDP just set up through the browser. Sometimes I'm on like a different laptop and if I just need to restart a Docker container, but I can just use a browser. It's just, it's just cool. And then I sort of learned about keeping our images up to date. And there's one called Watchtower, a process for automating Docker container based image updates. So as my understanding goes, this will essentially just stop the container, update the image when it needs to be updated, restart it, and it can continue on like nothing happens, but it's now up to date. We wanna keep things up to date. So if you haven't heard of Jellyfin, it's the free software media system, totally open source, freely available, and it's for hosting your own libraries or collections movies, shows, everything. It's so good because it's running over HTML5. For my media server, everything's living on this external hard drive that's been plugged into the server. So I've organized everything like in a subdirectory in the drive, downloads, movies, shows, and books. Like it's simple. It's super important if you've got different downloading software to set it up similar to this and share your topmost directory with each container. So quick Docker lesson. If we run Docker and PS, we can see a list of our containers that are running. If we just add a dash A and Q, so we just see a list, pass that through word count. So I have a total of 13 containers. So that's like currently the server setup. So say we wanna go into the Jellyfin container, we can use Docker and there's a sub command called execute in the interactive dash IT. We can just specify what container we wanna go into. I've named this one Jellyfin because it's for Jellyfin and we specify what we want to execute and it's going to be bash. So now we're in the container. So that's the container ID. I'm not sure why it says I have no name. I didn't create that user, but we can see here, here's the library directory. So that's my media external hard drive. That's where I've mapped it for this container. And we can exit out. And if we look at the config file, 
we have a Docker Compose. Here is how I have it mapped. So the top directory or the external drive itself is just mapped to library like we saw. And this is how I did have it mapped. So I did have it like all these separate mapping drives and I thought that that would be a better way of doing it. And personally, if you start getting into Docker, I kind of prefer having a Docker Compose.yaml file for all my containers. So sort of the last thing that I had to do is I've noticed that the Docker containers, sometimes the user can't read the hard drive. I'm not sure why, but it results in downloads not working, media can't play back, and just a quick Docker restart then fixes it. So I'm not sure like, what's actually causing the issue. For a Band-Aid solution at the moment, I've set up a cron tab to run once a day and just to restart all of the containers. So this runs a Docker restart. It goes and grabs the ID of each container and then just goes one after the other and restarts them all. Sort of hope that that fixes my problem for a little while. If you are using Docker and that sounds familiar, please let me know because I would like to learn. Otherwise, yeah, that's kind of a quick look at the home lab thus far. It's doing everything that I sort of want already for my non-critical services. So if you're thinking of starting up your own home lab, highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. But yeah, thanks for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed the home lab update. On the screen, you're going to see a recommendation for the last update. Otherwise, thanks again, and I uh, will see you in the next one. Okay, bye.